want to, um, what we're going to talk about today is head coverings. All right. Give it to cover us. Head coverings. Praise God. So, we all know 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's get there because I don't want to hold y'all long. Okay. So, and I'm just going to kind of line by line talk about this. I've been this for a while. I kind of didn't want to get too much notes. I know I can get crazy with notes and look for everything. <laughs> okay, well, we start at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and I'm just going to read. And we're going to stop as we go, okay? Okay, Paul says, Be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So we already know that that is the divine order of God. Amen? Every man praying or prophesying with his head covered dishonors his head. All right. Now, the word covered here, because we sometimes we, we um, I don't know if you've read some things, but people try to say it's, I mean, hair and all that kind of crazy. But um, what if you go in the Greek, get in that, okay. I'm not going to pronounce it in three words. <laughs> Amen. I can give you the number to correlate to in, in the, in the strong. It's so bad. You're all right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now I got, I'm, I'm flipping through pictures that my baby will put in my notebook. That's a mother right there. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that. It's the new group. Okay. There we are. All right, cover in the Strong's Concordance. When you look up cover, it says veil. Okay, so automatically we already see here he's not talking about hair. He's talking about a covering, an actual physical covering, which is a veil. Praise God. And it looks like I don't have it, but it's in my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so that's number one. We're, we already know from the jump we're talking about a veil. Okay, he says he dishonors his head. Why does God say so? How about that? I'm just playing. I'm just playing. We're going to talk about this. <laughs> okay, but every man, every woman that prays or prophesies, see, he's saying you can pray. You can prophesy with her head uncovered, dishonors her head, for that e that is even all one as if she were shaven. So the word uncovered. But in the Greek, they're made unveiled. Okay? okay? For if the woman be not covered, veiled, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. Now, this right here, we've come into a stage now in society where, okay, we're in rebellion, right? We're dealing with a lot of rebellion. So now you've seen people with their hair short and things like that. I like short hair. I like my hair cut short, but the Lord has been dealing with me on that too. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> now here, they're talking about, let her also be shorn, because it's a shame to a woman to have shorn or shaven hair. Now, in those days, the men wore their hair like in a, a buzz cut. So he's saying, now, if you, don't, if you don't walk around with a buzz cut hairstyle like a man would do, then why? Hold on, give me a second. He said, you might as well do that because you would feel shame if you didn't have hair. Okay. Right? Usually, if if it wasn't by choice for you to have short hair and buzz cut, uh -huh. you would not have short hair. Amen. Right. Amen. If it wasn't by choice. That's right. Now we're in a society where we see a lot of, a lot. A lot of low cuts tapered yeah. down like a man. Oh, and so it's becoming more readily acceptable yeah. and it's becoming more common. something that is more common, exactly. But that is not how it's. It's supposed to go. You see, All like right. cancer patients, they, they don't. You don't feel like a woman without hey, hair. That's right. Okay, you don't have none. You get you some hair, that's right? Right. <laughs> right. Okay. That's, that's right. something that makes you feel like a woman. And if you go out there and if you're not comfortable going out with a buzz cut and you feel shame, like people are looking at you, making fun of you. Okay. So that you understand what he's saying yes, here. Yeah. So if it's if it makes you feel shame to do that, 
then you need to have your head covered. You wouldn't go out without your without your hair. You shouldn't have be without your covering. Okay. Amen. So it says, for a man indeed ought not to cover his hair, veil his hair. That that the word cover is still veil. Okay. Now I want to go ahead and say this now. There are things called hom homonyms, right? Same word, different meanings. If I say to you, attorney at law, and power of attorney. I'm not, am I talking about the attorney's power when I say power of attorney? No, you know I'm talking about something different, but it's the same word, right? If I say bang, and then big bang theory, you're not, I'm not talking about a theory on how to, I'm, <laughs> I know I can get it to my children's mother. But anyway, but you know I'm not talking about how to cut the flyest bang theory. You know what I'm saying? So we got bang and then we got bang. Pow bang. Okay, so there are words in the Greek, just like we have in our own English language, that are the same word but different meanings. Okay, so let's keep going. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for his mention, but we cover that. Praise God, praise God. Amen. Okay. Um, for this cause of the woman, did we go on verse 8? For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. I'm sorry, I'll start with seven. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as, and that cover means veil, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. So, we understand here in glory, that's his glory. So God is saying, the man came out of me, that's my glory. That's right. That's she right. came out of you, that's your glory. That's right. The children come out of you, that's yours glory. That's you know? right. Okay, so that's beget, beget. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. So for this cause, ought the woman, and he's saying because of this. Because of this. Mm -hmm. Ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Now that scripture, is, it, it, can, it goes deeper than it's read. Okay, so it says... For the woman ought to have power on her head. Some translations will say ought to have authority on her head, representing her head. Some scriptures say she ought to have a symbol of authority. Now the word symbol of authority is almost kind of loosely translated, but not. Okay, so a symbol, what is a symbol? A symbol is something used for or regarded as representing something else, a material object. Jasmine, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Um, a material object representing something, often something immaterial, emblem, token, or sign. Now, that word token in there, when you go and look it up in the Greek, uh, the, the concordance, the word power, it has on there a token of control as one of its meanings. Now, don't get, you know, too caught up in the word control basically another way of saying subjection. Okay? So it's a token of subjection, which is what power is. So we know the power, physical token on her head because of the angels. What angels? Okay. We have our heavenly angels and we also have what? Fallen angels. Okay? So we're not, I'm not going to get too over that way because it can go that way. Okay. But we have our heavenly angels, and uh, it, it wonders to me that everything else we can follow an order to or know that you have to do this step before you do this step, uh -huh. especially if you're baking, you leave the salt out, or if you add salt and you're already using um, self-rising flour. <laughs> you ever made something like that, you get self-rising flour and then you add salt? Yeah. Woo, too salty. You got to follow the steps to get the right product. <laughs> Same thing in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Everything that God made has order. Yes. Our bodies, That's everything that we do, everything. He is a God of order. order. He Amen. does things on purpose. That's everything right. has a reason. Amen. So this has a reason. There is a step. I, I guess <laughs> I, uh, bring it to the Lord. There is a way that we should come to worship. Amen. And there's a